Hello and welcome to this tutorial on using the Blend tool in Spaceclave. Now I like to think of the Blend tool as a special case or an advanced uh, version of the Pull tool. Um, it has its own option here. Uh, you don't use the Pull tool uh, to do it. You actually click on the Blend tool or you can hit B on the keyboard to select it. Now, I'm not actually going to select the tool yet. Uh, because uh, I, what I like to do when I'm using the blend tool is I like to make my selection first and then run the blend. Uh, you can uh, select the blend tool first and, and do the operation. However, you get slightly different behavior, and I'll, I'll show you how that works in a second. Um, so if I just you know select some of these edges, um, now the order matters, and I'll explain why in a second. I'll show you what happens if I don't select them in the right order, but I'm just, I'm just going to select them in the order I want uh, right now, just to show you how the tool works. I hit the B key on the keyboard, or I can hit the, the blend uh, the blend icon up there, and you'll notice now it creates this nice kind of surface uh, from this edge all the way around to this edge. You'll notice it doesn't actually it doesn't close the figure. That's because I haven't told Space Claim that I want this to be what's called a periodic blend, or I want it to to close it. Uh, so if I wanted to do that, actually, I can just click over here in the in the options panel, click on periodic blend, and now it it knows that I want it to go back to the origin. So it creates this nice nice surface. And once I'm happy with it, and I can hit the green check mark. But I want to show you what happens um, if I if I don't select those uh, edges in the in the right order, so before so finalizing my uh, or completing the the the, the uh, blend operation, I'm just going to hit Escape to cancel it, and I'm going to show you now what happens if I start selecting it in uh, a different order. Uh, so so again, I, I start with this uh, edge, but then I decide, well, I'm gonna you know I I, I don't really care. Uh, I'm just going to select all the all of the edges that I want to do the blend between, hoping that you know Space Game is going to be smart enough to know you know the shape that I want. I'm just going to select them at random. Now when I hit the B key, you'll notice it's it did the blend in the order in which I selected them. So it gave very different behavior. Again, Space Game doesn't really know uh, you know, it's not smart enough. It doesn't read your mind, so it doesn't know, you know, that that you want that lampshade uh, shape. So I'm just gonna again hit Escape, and I'm gonna recreate that. And again, selecting the order that I want. Now you'll notice this time as I'm selecting, I have uh, the Blend key uh, already, the Blend tool activated. So as I'm control selecting these edges you'll notice it's creating that kind of blend as I go along uh, this might you might actually prefer this because that that way you can sort of see if you're making a mistake if you selected something out of order you'll be able to catch your error uh, very quickly and again I want this to be a periodic blend so I'm going to just check off periodic blend and now I have this nice surface now I am happy with it uh, and I want to complete the operation. I just click on this green check mark. Very important to always remember to click on that green check mark, as if you don't, as soon as you click somewhere else in white space, you're going to lose uh, that selection. Uh, so now I have this nice 2D surface. Uh, I can tell it's 2D because it's it's not opaque. I can see through it. So that means it's uh, it doesn't have any thickness. So to add some thickness, I'm just going to select it. I'm going to hit the pull tool. And again, by default, you know, the pull tool is going to pull normal to the surface. Uh, so as I pull it out, you know, as I get that nice sort of thickness, I'm going to let go. And there you have that nice, now I have this nice 3D lampshade shape. Uh, and the blend tool is going to work similarly with faces. Um, you can do, you know, you can blend between faces, you can blend between edges, you can blend between points. Um, so I'm just going to select these faces here in this order to create my lamp base. Hit the B key, and there we have this nice shape. Again, it's going to try to create this sweeping curve. Now, maybe I don't want it to sweep. Maybe I want these to be sort of uh, what we call ruled segments. So I want it just to go straight here to, to here to here to here it, without trying to sort of extrapolate this uh, this curvature. Uh, so. To do that, I'm just again go to the options panel, click on ruled segments, and you'll notice you get this very sort of different behavior. Uh, 
And that might be preferable. That might be what you want. In this case, it's not quite what I want. I, I do want that sort of sweeping, sort of classic lampshade look. Uh, so I'm going to leave it as that. I'm going to click on the green check mark, and there we go. We have our completed uh, lamp. Now I can also do some interesting things. Um, I can select, you know, these square pieces here, or if I if I rotate some of these pieces around, I can create a more interesting shape. So I'm just going to rotate that a little bit, rotate this one a little bit. I haven't shown you how to how to do a uh, move tool yet, but uh, we'll get to it eventually. But I just wanted to show you sort of this um, that you can kind of. Uh, create interesting shapes with the blend tool. So, and then I, again, I'm just going to select these surfaces and then I'm going to hit the blend tool and I get this nice. Again, it's going to try to sort of follow, uh, you know, this, uh, it's going to try to interpret your, uh, your selections and sort of do that nice, uh, shape there. And, you know, I can change, change that again to ruled segments and get a different shape uh, very quickly and easily just depending on what I want. But I'm going to leave it as such and I'm going to hit the green check mark and solidify it. It's just to show you that you can create some pretty complex geometry uh, with just a few simple clicks. Um, now you can also, as I said, you can do a blend between points. Uh, so I'm just going to hide this shape here in the structure tree. I'm going to create the cord for this lamp. Uh, so once again, you know, I, I have the blend tool selected, so I can just start clicking on my points, again, holding the control key, and it's going to sweep out this nice kind of spline as I select those, uh, those points. Uh, and then when I'm happy with it, again, hit the green check mark. Now, in real reality, you know, most uh, electrical cords are not sort of one-dimensional strings, uh, but they're actually, like, have some thickness. So uh, I'll show you a, a, a quick technique you can do to, to turn a spline into a tube. And just select that, uh, that spline um, and go to the Insert tab and click on Cylinder. Now what that's going to do is, as I move my mouse, it's going to change the thickness of that. It's going to create a, a cylinder around uh, that line, or on that spline, I, I mean to say. Um, and again, I can type in, you know, the. I want it to be one one millimeter in diameter. I can one hit enter, and there you have this nice um, electrical cord. Now finally, to finish off this vase, or sorry, this lamp, uh, I'm going to select, go back to the uh, design tab, select these two faces, so the back face of this sort of plug here and the, the front face of this, uh, this tube or wire, and then I'm going to hit the blend tool or hit the B key on my keyboard, and it, you'll see it, it creates this nice shape. So it goes from a circle to this kind of, not not rectangular, but uh, sort of more uh, more rectangular shape, and it creates this nice uh, transition between them. So uh, depending on what you want, again, this might not be exactly the shape you want, in which case you could add sort of more surfaces to to uh, to add more definition, but uh, just, you know, as is, it does a pretty good job uh, predicting sort of going from a circle to this rectangular shape. Again, I hit the green check mark, and there I have you know, my completed lamp, I'm going to, you know, unhide the lamp, and now we have our complete lamp with cord and all. Uh, last thing I want to show you is this blend. Uh, you can use control curves uh, or guide curves to kind of uh, create a more sophisticated blend. So, for example, I say I want to create, uh, you know, a blend from this side to this side, but I want it to sort of follow this this shape. So it's gonna. I'm gonna uh, do the my blend. It's gonna sort of bulge out in this direction as I do it. In order to do that, I have to. I select uh, just like I was doing a, a blend, a normal blend. I'm just gonna select that line and select this other line. I want to do a blend between them. But before I move on, while I still have the control key held down, I'm also gonna hold down the Alt key, and I'm gonna start clicking on these guide curves. I'll notice since I have the Alt key held down, 
it's going to highlight them in blue, which indicates that they're going to be used as guide curves. So it's not doing a blend between these lines. It's just saying, okay, I want to blend from this line to this line, and I want to follow these lines. Uh, so now that I've done that, I just let go, hit the B key on the keyboard, and you'll see it's created this nice shape uh, going through this nice uh, sort of curvature here. Um, so I'm going to hit that green check mark again, and now you'll see I have this fairly uh, complex geometry. So that's uh, pretty much it for the blend tool. As you can see, you can create some quite uh, quite sophisticated geometry with it. I encourage you to kind of play around with it, uh, experiment, try to create uh, interesting shapes. Um, just to experiment with it. It's, it's a quite powerful tool. In the next tutorial, we'll start to talk about how to use the move tool. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful.